the things you can do with a web GIS is to find your latitude longitude, your location on the Earth. In other words, so you won't be lost. You can actually find your latitude and longitude. That's quite easy to do with WebGIS. Let's find out how to do that and also talk about how you could use that in an instructional setting in the classroom. Let's dig into the latitude and longitude finder. It's available under this ESRI GIS Education Community website. Now this, this website will probably change in look and feel, but no matter what it looks like in the future, you'll be able to easily find the latitude and longitude finder. At the moment, it's under web mapping tools. If I scroll down here to latitude and longitude finder, it fires it right up. There is my latitude and longitude finder. I've got a variety of things I can do here. For example, if I scroll around and I zoom in, that coordinate right there is 39.01367 north and 98.76953 west. Let's say I'm at a school and let's say my students are collecting some data and I want to verify where the field site is in terms of latitude and longitude. Let's say I just want to check my GPS's before I go out in the field. I can use this tool and center it on the, let's say I'm going to have my students collect data right here where that street bends. So that is at this particular latitude and longitude. Very useful. Okay, but let's say I also want to uh, check the imagery. Let's say I'm going to have my students actually collect the position right here at the start of the track at the school. So that's at this latitude and this longitude. Then when I come back from the field, I can verify that my coordinates are, are right on. I can also type in an address. For example, let's say I know I'm going out with my students to this historical ranch at 1937 West Gilman Street in Banning, California. If I find address, it locates it right there. Okay, great. So now I have a latitude longitude at that address. I can also go to World Places and go ahead and let's say I'm interested in a place that I was recently, Salzburg, Austria. There it is. As you can see, it's right on the edge of the Alps. The Alps down here, the plains up to the north, and there's Salzburg. Wonderful place. Let's go ahead and change it to a streets map. Okay, so there's my lat long finder for world places. So to sum up, this latitude longitude finder is quite useful. It's out there on the web mapping tools on the edcommunity.sre.com site. And what I use it for mostly is to verify latitude and longitude coordinates before I go out with students so that if one of the waypoints comes back, let's say I'm going out to this place, if one of the waypoints comes back at 33.39 north instead of 33.93 north, I know that there was either a problem with the student's transcription of that latitude or longitude, or that the GPS uh, signal was compromised somehow by tall trees or being in a canyon or somehow being being hidden uh, in terms of not seeing enough satellites in the sky. So it's a nice double check on your positions before you go out in the field or even after you come back in from the field and you've got some data. Uh, also, if you've got some data sets for uh, different locations around the world, it's a nice verification on the accuracy of the latitude longitude coordinates. It also can provide a nice introduction to the whole idea of precision and accuracy. Do we really need that many uh, decimal places, for example? So if we scroll the map, for example, up, how long before you actually get to 34 degrees north? And uh, so if the, if the 
data came back and it got rounded somehow, you could see that 34 degrees north is actually way up there. So it's quite a distance from the Banning Historical Ranch. And so it's a nice teaching tool to illustrate that, yes, you really do need all those um, decimal places, and precision does matter. Excellent. Thanks.